Australia, a place of stunning landscapes, ecosystems and communities. We all know that since European settlement, Australia's landscapes have changed dramatically, with only 50% of our forests remaining intact. Open grassy forests are a vegetation type with moderately tall trees and a reasonably open canopy that lets in some light, and the ground layer tends to be grassy. Open grassy forests have adapted with the traditional burning practices of Australia's First Nations people. In Australia, on the north coast of New South Wales, there are three types of open grassy forest, including dry sclerophyll forests, grassy woodlands, and wet sclerophyll forests. This map shows the extent of open grassy forests on the north coast of New South Wales prior to European settlement. But when we overlay modern distribution maps of open grassy forests, you can see that vast swaths have been cleared by tree felling or have reforested and closed in due to a lack of fire in the landscape. These modern changes means there is less suitable habitat for the animals that require open grassy forests for protection, feeding and nesting. So what we're looking at here is a grassy eucalypt slope. We've got to this stage where we've got these gorgeous grasses, a variety of them interspersed with weed grasses which we have to manage with either herbicide or with pulling. And also over the years we've uh, thinned out some of the trees so that we're not getting this fully returning into uh, wet eucalypt forest or dry eucalypt forest. From now on this gorgeous area looks as good as it does and has a variety of grasses because of the burns that we've been doing. And that has enabled a variety of grasses to come to the fore. Previously they were just dominated by one of the native grasses plus the weed grasses. We started very small, we do very small mosaic burns as they're called and this is very helpful, it means it doesn't get out of control and it does mean that we're not in danger of entrapping or burning any of the wildlife, they've got, always got other places to run. Well, my name's Shannon, I'm a fauna ecologist and I'm here in the beautiful Corumban Valley. Uh, this is Garama Conservation Reserve. This is an area of land that's owned by the National Trust of Australia, Queensland and it's devoted to uh, helping to save some of our threatened species. And the most important animal that we have here at Garama are our eastern bristlebirds. Uh, Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary is really lucky that we're able to have a captive population of such an endangered bird. So they're found in a very small area of open grassy forest that's found around the New South Wales and the Queensland border. So this area here is a perfect place to breed these animals uh, because one of the aims that we uh, have here is to try and increase the population so that we can uh, help to increase the wild population of such an important species. Uh, what I have found is some of the areas where bristlebirds and other threatened species are really flourishing are those areas uh, that have reached the level of improvement. You basically don't need to do anything except maintain that fire regime and maintain access into that property so that you can get the fire to where it really needs to be. At the time of uh, European colonisation, these forests and the plants and animals within them would have been really finely adapted to careful Aboriginal burning. Um, however, now uh, most of these forests haven't seen fire for more than 50 years in our region, so they're long, long overdue for fire. And that causes really dramatic changes in the habitat structure in the forests. So um, it's been found within uh, Byron Shire, for example, that uh, three quarters of the dry uh, forests have actually been invaded by uh, fire sensitive rainforest pioneers and fire sensitive weeds. Now, the problem uh, there is, is that they quickly form a dense mid-storey, a dense shady mid-storey, and that can really quickly eliminate that shade intolerant plant community underneath that is so important. You're losing the vast proportion of your plant diversity in those forests, but you're also losing that really important fauna habitat um, for those animals that depend on that uh, ground layer. 
it's not so much a question of whether they will or won't burn, it's really a question of whether they burn in conditions of wildfire or conditions that are more controlled that we choose where it's well resourced and uh, well managed. And a lot of people have that perception that all fire behaves like that extreme leaping from crown to crown uh, sort of fire catastrophe. But when fire is applied in those cool conditions, in the right um, conditions, for example, in, as you're approaching the cool of the evening or in the, a winter's afternoon, the fire can be uh, done in a way that it's very controlled and very managed and very mild, and you can turn it up or down in, in any way you like. approach traditional landowners uh, for their advice and guidance and hopefully implementation. Other uh, avenues of course are to uh, potentially work with the Rural Fire Service if you have, um, you can demonstrate that there'll be a hazard reduction benefit as well. If you neighbour onto a national park then I recommend that you start conversations with them because sometimes they might like to do burns that then extend out into adjacent uh, neighbouring lands. There are um, also paid burn contractors who um, may or may not be Indigenous as well uh, who you could approach to come and do the work and ultimately I think although it requires a fair bit of um, uh, skill and experience and training but the place that we should be trying to get to is those landowners that feel they ultimately have the capacity to develop their own uh, capacity and understanding and experience to do a lot of this work themselves. Before undertaking burning, landholders must be aware of their responsibilities to manage fire risks to assets, including protecting old growth trees, hollows and cultural values. So access is the key, really, um, to being able to get in safely and efficiently into your work areas. I hate spraying trees, but when you want this grassy open habitat as we do, you want to emulate fire, really. So, you know, smaller trees, less than 10 centimetre diameter, will die in a fire anyway. Um, so that's what we try and do is emulate the fire. I guess for uh, like information on weeds and how to get them, there's a good app, the DPI Weedwise app, which is worthwhile and free to have a quick look at. But there's, it can list a lot of different chemicals, so it's probably worthwhile have a look at that and still go to your rural store and they'll have someone there that can talk you through the different chemicals available. Good fire is the most natural way of managing open grassy forest habitat. But if you want to know more about your patch of vegetation, and how best to manage it, please consult an ecologist, your local land care, or local land services. Yeah.